Weekly All Access. This is your girl Brianna, and we are here live with Drummer Boy. Hey, yeah, boy, what's happening? How's it going? It's a blessing to be here. What's happening? It's good, it's good, it's good. Tell us what you're working on. Uh, right now, we're working on a little bit of everything, man. We had uh, Queen Latifah in last night. She working on some new projects, so she just gave me a little to-do list. Uh, currently working on 8-Ball and MJG album. Uh, we're doing uh, Young Greatness' new album. He just did a new deal on Cash Money. So excited about that situation. Uh, Bloody Summer, the project on the way, the single We Rolling. Um, he's on a uh, radio tour right now, okay. promoting the record and whatnot. Um, and then we're working on my album, The Concoction. I'm working on Drum Squad Compilation. We got a plethora of different artists signed to the label, so we're working on that project. Um, as well as uh, Too Short, The Pimp Tape. I got his single, Ain't My Girlfriend, featuring Ty Dollar, French Montana, uh, Jeremiah. Um, and then a lot of different independent projects as well. So it's kind of hard to keep up uh, with everything and, and name drop everything. So as I remember, I shot some stuff out, but I'm, I'm all over the place. Okay. Okay, so you say you're you're currently working on something with Queen Latifah, or she's, she was just here? Uh, she came in here the other day. She's working on Star, her okay. uh, reality show Star with Lee Daniels, and uh, they always need music for that. She's also... Just always recording songs for her as an artist. Okay. Um, not knowing when she's going to release or, or drop a next project, a new album or whatnot. But she's always looking for material for the project. So, okay. you know, I'm, I'm uh, beginning to do some stuff with that. Missy Elliott as well. Um, we're going to do some stuff with Monica. Uh, okay. 112 just came in here. They're doing some uh, a new album. So we're doing some stuff for the 112 album as well. Okay. Well, who are some of your musical influences? Uh, musical influences for me are the cats like Isaac Hayes. That was one of my mentors. Uh, my father is a is a huge influence in my life. Beethoven, and I would say like Quincy Jones would be number four. Dr. Dre number five. Okay. So, uh, in light of streaming and you know the change in the music culture, uh, where do you see music in five years? Uh, music in five years, I see music is always music. So regardless how you purchase it or what mm -hmm. different channels or routes that you have to go through to purchase music. I mean, from 100 years ago, we were going to record stores to seeing people live shows, performances and whatnot, which we're still seeing live performances. We're still purchasing music. We're just not going to the record store to get it. We're going to iTunes, Apple Music, streaming locations and whatnot. But we still love to dance. We love to laugh. Right. We love to... To, to share stories of what we heard in different music songs and we use a lot of the music to relate to our own personal life mm -hmm. so I, I don't think that's going to ever change okay. as far as how you purchase the music te the technology and the different websites corporations that are available for a purchase um, that's the only thing that's changed okay so um, in your opinion what would you consider uh, the biggest misconception about producers that don't play instruments uh, I wouldn't really know because I play instruments, so I, okay. I don't really pay attention to what I don't do mm -hmm. too often, but um, I've seen some producers who don't play an instrument as well right now today who are bigger than me, have a bigger name than me and more fame and more publicity and whatnot because maybe they DJ. Okay. So it, it's about just doing what you love to do and having fun. Like I didn't right. make beats to be famous. You know okay. what I mean? So I could care less about how famous I am. I didn't make beats to like uh uh like win Grammys or like you know what I'm saying? I'm making beats to just have fun and like I okay. think that's what makes people gravitate to me and I think that's why I've had such a success because you enjoy um, it and consistency yeah. in what I do. Gotcha. So, you know, what is some advice that you would give to up and coming, you know, producers? that sell or, you know, have their beats online? Um, advice to people who sell their beats online is, is, is keep getting your money, but, you know, definitely try to 
get the relationship with the artist. That's the one thing I learned. Like emailing beats to people, yeah, I can still get a hit. Like I email Quavo to look at my dad beat. And they just call me back like, yo, we got one. All right. I email Jeezy, put on beat. He called me back like, yo, we got one. It not it not all the time does it happen like that. Like I still actually know Jeezy. I still can call him. He's gonna pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. When he see me, he's gonna come speak, vice versa. So it's a little deeper than just the email. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to some people delivering beats through online or email. When they see you, they don't even know who you are. Or when they see you, they might not speak or you know what I mean? Right. Like it's a respect thing. So so for me, I, I make sure I know the artists, all of my relationships. Um and all of my placements on albums have come from relationships. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it's, it's important that you have a relationship with the artist. Exactly. Okay. Well, name a few older records that you would love to sample and why. Older records I love to sample. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, the Detroit Emeralds. Everybody loves sampling. Lamont Dozier, Isaac Hayes. Um, you, you sample what's like great music. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and well put together music. Especially the drummers. Like... Music that's in the pocket, mm -hmm. a lot of music that's like dead on tempo for a producer because some samples be kind of drifting or like kind of off as far as the first two seconds of the sample will be mm -hmm. on beat, but then the last two seconds will be off. So you want like records that are time sensitive as far as like quantization. Um, and then now they got software where you can kind of like time lapse, time stretch mm -hmm. um, and, and put the sample how you want to. So. It's really on your creativity, but I, I'm sampling records from, like, everywhere. You know, and it, it really mm -hmm. comes down to the format, comes down to the quality um, and, and the tempo. Okay. Okay. Well, tell me um, what were some of the challenges, you know, as you pursued your career as a producer uh, that you faced and, you know, how did you surpass them? Challenges for me as a producer coming up in the game was people to work with. Like coming out of Memphis, we only had like at the time three six mafia, mm -hmm. your player flies, A Ball MJGs, Project Pat, Juicy J, um, Gangsta Boo, Project uh I mean uh Gangsta Pat, um Gangsta Black, you know, Crunchy Black, like it's just you know, it was <laughs> <laughs> just a few, like, you know what I'm saying, artists, right. Endo G and your Tealers and cats like that. And it was a lot, like, more OGs. Like, I was, like, the young cat. So when I was coming up, like, one of the first young dudes that I bumped into and, and got it, like, four years older than me. Mm -hmm. But when I bumped into Gotti, it was, like, just a whole new breath of fresh air for, like, Memphis rap and, like, right. Memphis energy and just people who really doing it, who buying beats. Because mm -hmm. not everybody got Memphis and money. Right. I mean, not not everybody got money in Memphis, and it was only a few cats who was really going to spend the money. Even if you had the money, like, cats is cheap, or like, man, I'm I'm, I'm tight, like, I ain't, you know what I mean? Or they right. spending it on what they want to spend it on, like the rims, the girls, the cars, the clubs, the drugs, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So, the beats is, like, last on the list. Right. So, coming up with Yo Gotti, he was working on an album uh, called Life. And I was like, man, I got some for it. He bumped into me. He spent like five thousand and just got like a whole gang of beats. Mm. And then I, he got beats for that life album. He got beats for the uh, Back to the Basics album. And then he did another project after that. Um, and I did a song for him called That's What's Up. When you see me shout it, that's what's up. Pop your collar, that's what's up. And it just took off. Like I'm 16, 17 oh, in high wow. school. So you know what I mean. That taking off throughout the city. I did another song for Tila called uh, Tennessee. I did three songs on the Double Dose album, which was like Tila, one of his last biggest albums on the rap a lot. So um, that's how my whole mob ties with Jay Prince and Lil J Prince Jr. and everything began on that note. Just just family and, and being in the game at such a young age, you know what I mean, and making an impact. And from there, I got calls from Pastor Troy. Uh, I did Off In This Game, Pop It Pussy, Make Them Get Their Money Right. First strip club song in Atlanta, I'm 19 years old. You know what I mean? And started getting phone calls from Block ENT. Then I get a call from Jeezy. I'm doing my solo album. And then it just kept going. You know what I mean? But the thing in Memphis, it wasn't really too many people to work with. So I had to kind of, you know, stick and move. And let me go out here to Chicago. Let me go out here to St. Louis, work with Gucci O and Future. Let me go out here, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, um, Miami and, and work with these guys out here. And it was just about moving around and, and showcasing myself and promoting myself. I'm in the... 
in the nail salons, I'm in the barber shops, I'm everywhere I can be promoting my CDs, my bass tapes, and letting people know, man, drummer boy, drummer boy, drummer boy, you know what I mean? And I would approach any and everybody. Like, yo, my name's Drum Boy, I got the beat CD, I ain't gonna take too much time. Bam, a number on the CD, holla at me. I always put my number, I always put an email, catch will call. Wow, okay. Well, you pretty much answered the next question. <laughs> you summed that up. Um, who would be your top three dream mentors, past or present, and why? Um, uh, Man, my dream mentors were actually my mentors in real life. Like, my, my biggest mentor... And my dream and mentor will always be my father. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just from what he taught me in the game and, 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 and instilled, you know, that I learned from an early age with the orchestra, coming from an orchestral background, music theory, music appreciation, being able to read, write, arrange, compose. Um, it was just a blessing. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then on the other side, my mom had me right under Isaac Hayes. Mm -hmm. So it's like with these two people, you know what I mean? And then I guess like outside inspirations that I looked up to that I couldn't touch at the time, I would say Quincy Jones. Okay. And then the first time I went to Atlanta, I won an award for um, Plies, Shouty, and it, that was like my first ASCAP award. So I go to uh, L.A. and I haven't won a suit since like church, you know, since like 15, 16. So here it is. I'm like. 23, 24, going to L.A. for the first time, finally putting on a suit again. And it, it was really like a life-changing moment, you know, being invited to all the different parties and whatnot. And I met Quincy Jones, and all I did was call his name. Like, Quincy Jones, hey, man, it's Drummer Boy. Mm -hmm. He actually stopped, okay. turned around, and was like, pleasure to meet you, young man. And he actually talked to me for like five minutes. Then mm -hmm. he took my number, had his assistant take my number, and, it, and it, uh, invited me to his house that weekend. There was a lot of Swedish producers and, and other producers from different countries over at the time. And we all were just there talking and sharing beat tips and tricks and trades and whatnot. And, you know, drinking liquor. Like He's got all this brown and white champagne and whatnot. And then we went on to another Grammy party. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just a blessing to be like, okay, I'm in Quincy Jones's house in right. L.A. sipping vodka. Right. You know what I mean? About to go over across the street to Jimmy Iovine's mm -hmm. uh, Grammy party. You know right. what I mean? So right. it's just a blessing. Like you never know, you know, what accomplishments will lead you, where your accomplishments will lead you. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I never like started making beats for accomplishments. So I never just were like, man, let me, let me, let me get around this person for this reason, or let me. You know what I'm saying? Get around this person for this reason. I always wanted to earn my respect. I always wanted to earn wherever I went. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know, people just just vouch for you because they love your music, not right. because you know what I'm saying. Like you bought your way in, or you the new dude on this label, mm -hmm. and they just liking you temporarily. Like everything with me, I always wanted to be organic and genuine. Right. And then just by doing a little bit of research on you, I see that you you started your chat your your challenges at a young age, mm -hmm. like he, your father challenged you to, a, what was it, $100,000? Yeah, my dad challenged me to 100000 It's crazy because he cool with the dean of the university. He's a mm -hmm. professor at the university. So the only reason I was going to school was for him. Like, I felt like I already went through all the home school, all the home training, all the knowledge. Like, I'm making A's in all of my music classes, but I'm flunking out in sports. I'm flunking out in gym. I'm flunking out in basketball. Like, bro, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I ain't got time for it. I'm in Atlanta. Selling a beat to Pastor Troy. Pastor Troy paid me 4000 a beat. Mm. Like, I'm 18. Cats wonder why I charge ten and 20000 now. Like, bro, I was getting 4000 a beat when I was, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right. I ain't really, I ain't really, you know what I'm saying? I, ain't, I, I can't, I ain't got time for it. You know what I mean? So I, I'm busy on the road, focusing on these shows, and, 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 and staying, like, you know, grounded to what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Right. And, and my dad made me a bet. Like, he actually found out I was kicked out of uh, college. So I got, like, uh, what do they call it? Like, I got kicked out for six months due to unattendance. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So they gave me, like, a six-month suspension, so to speak, which did me a favor because I did stand an ovation in that time. I did Boys in the Hood in that time and a couple other projects in that period. So I was really just trying to get my name as big as possible because I never told my dad that I was drummer boy. So all he mm -hmm. knows is Chris Golson. Mm -hmm. Everybody in Memphis called me Lil Golson. Lil Golson, Lil Golson, Lil Golson. What's up, man? We 
little girl I was with, you know what I'm saying? Right. So through the whole high school, like I was cafeteria king. I did all of the beats. I was, you know, I used my fork and knife for drumsticks at the cafeteria table. Like I was the beat king. I had everybody freestyling on my beats and whatnot, and I was doing all of the warm ups to the, uh, to the, um, I was varsity basketball team, so we did all of the warm ups to the, like all the all the music for the warm ups at the basketball games. Mm -hmm. And um, I just picked up a name throughout the streets, like I'm on Gotti album, I'm on Tila album, and here it is, my dad not knowing what I do. And your parents, they're always, like, concerned about what you're doing with your time. Right. Like, like, what are you doing? I know you're doing something. So I tell them, I'm like, yo, I'm drummer boy, bro. Like, I make beats. You know what I'm saying? I'm on Gotti album. I'm on this album. I'm on this album. Oh, so you're doing rap. You're doing rap music. Da, 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 da. And a lot of musicians, like, in the orchestra, they look at rap as, like, like, like it's, it's not really music. You know what I mean? It's just a whole bunch of loops. Or, you know, a lot of musicians mad at us, especially in that time period in the 70s and 80s when electronic drum beats was coming around and taking the jobs of the musicians. So now people don't need bands like that anymore when you can just rap on a beat box or rap on a beat machine beat or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad was just talking all this shit like, man, you ain't got no debit card. You ain't getting no money. Da -da 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 -da. You got kicked out of school. I pull out 10,000 cash. You know what I'm saying? Throw it on the table. I'm what 19. What do you think about that? <laughs> He's like, that ain't no money. You can't buy your mama the house you want. You can't buy your mama this. You can't buy yourself this and that. You ain't got no credit. You know what I mean? What you going to do when that cash run out? What you going to do if somebody just run up on you and steal that from you? And he was just breaking down all these points. You ain't got no debit card. You ain't got no credit card. He was like, man, you fucking up. Da -da 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 -da. You ain't going to be shit. And then he just told me I wasn't going to be shit. I just burst out. like, Just like, damn, this is my dad telling me. I'm not gonna be shit. And I'm drummer boy. I'm already drummer boy. I just stood up on him like nigga, I'm drummer boy. I got this. I'm on this nigga album. I'm on this nigga album. I'm on this. You got me fucked up. And I told him, I'm like, man, I'm gonna be something. You know what I'm saying? He's like, man, since you so bad, big bad wolf, show me a hundred thousand in your account within twelve months. Or else I'm gonna beat your ass. And he stood up, I stood up. We face to face, eye to eye with each other. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And right. like when he did that, like it was just everything. Like I just, I just at that moment, knew, like, what I had to do. I knew my purpose in life. And it was like, nobody could tell me shit. It ain't nothing, any woman, any man, mama, family. It ain't about nobody but me. And I get into that mode where I just snap and just jump into me mode. Like, because it's the only thing that, 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 that got me here. So if I don't be me, I'm not going to get me where I need to be. You see what I'm saying? Man, 10 months later, I pull up on Pops with 150. You need some money? You need 10, 20, Pop, you straight? Because 30,000 a year, no disrespect, Pop. That ain't that ain't the route that I'm trying to go. I ain't trying to be no musician playing in the orchestra and doing all this great music for the world that's unappreciated. Orchestra, orchestra music and, and movies and, and film and whatnot, to me, is the most underappreciated music in the world. And that's why it's the least listened to but it's the most listened to in movies and film. So you listening to it without even listening to it, without even knowing this is what's making you feel suspenseful or what, not even knowing this is what's making you feel emotional or not even knowing the music behind what just happened is also helping you cry. But you think it's just what you saw, but it's a lot to do with the music as well as what you saw that makes you feel like, oh, or certain scenes that make you feel uplifting and nobody really pays attention to the music and the emotion that it sets. So I always wanted to bring that back in hip hop and jazz and, and, and urban music and any different worlds and ways that we can to actually touch the people. Everything that I've ever made in my life has been emotional. And that's why it touches so many people. That's why it sticks to me. That's what is the secret behind timeless music is the emotion into it. Right. Okay, nice. So, in wrapping up, uh, is there anything that you feel like um, you want to let the viewers know? Um, do you have anything new you got up and coming? Yeah, we just uh, opened a retail store. So, shout out to everybody who like to be fresh. We got the clothing for the ladies, the women's, the kids, um, the men. We got top brands, um, you know, picking up everything from Black Pyramid, Hudson. We got my brand, Fresh Family. We're doing Nike, Puma, Adidas, Staple. Uh, AT Ziano, uh, Asphalt, you name it, we're gonna have it. Hustle Gang, uh, um, Hood America, Yo Gotti's line, Black Pyramid, Chris Brown line. We're doing some stuff with uh, 
Logan Paul and Maverick uh, is his line. So any new lines, ladies, anything that y'all know y'all y'all liking, you want me to pick up. We got Tango Hotel, the the the, the underwear that's popping, um, Ethica. We picking up some stuff from them too. So it's just a blessing to just be able to provide fashion to this community in this area of Midtown. There's nowhere really to shop. There's so many studios in this area and a lot of guys come in town 9, 30, 10 o'clock after hour shopping. It's blank. It's nowhere to go. So if you miss Lennox, if you miss Walters, if you miss Motorfold Fo, come see me, House of Fresh, ATL. Follow us on IG, House of Fresh, ATL. It's going down. Lots of real cool events and whatnot going on too. So definitely stay tuned. Okay. Well, tell us where we can reach you at on social media. Uh, you can follow me at Drummer Boy Fresh, Twitter, Instagram. Check out the website, drummerboy.com. Um, it's pretty much everything you'll need. Okay. Well, it was nice speaking with you. For sure. And we do appreciate you for talking with Hip Hop Weekly and participating in our Behind the Beat segment. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Uh, and then check out my book because okay. I'm writing a book called Behind the Beats, Behind okay. the Hits. Okay, behind the hips. So uh, okay. definitely check that out. Shout out to Tamiko Hope. Um, she's helping me put a lot of things together uh, regarding the book, and I'm looking forward to just sharing my stories further in detail on how I made each one of my hits in my life and throughout my career. So that's going to be uh, behind the hits, drummer boy. Definitely stay tuned. Okay. And this is your girl on the checkout, Brianna Crudup, Hip Hop Weekly All Access, and we're out. Never for the love, for the fame, never change.